So, ladies and gentlemen, there's been a lot of soap operas in hockey history. Uh, Eric Lindros trade, Guy Lafleur with his disco uh, nights that almost kill him. Uh, the Doug Gilmore case. Uh, uh, Brett Lindros with his concussion syndrome that didn't change the NHL but should have. Sean Avery, of course, sloppy seconds. But this soap opera lasted a number of weeks uh, and concluded on a good note for Team Canada but at the time it was considered one of the most controversial international hockey tournaments of all time not because the play was dirty it's just because we didn't know how it was going to end because of the shifting of players so today we're going to be talking about all the machinations of the 1984 Canada Cup now the Labatt Canada Cup Labatt was a big sponsor Canadian uh, beer company was a pro international ice hockey tournament played during the first three weeks of September 84 now this happened after the owners knocked off the Islanders for the first Stanley Cup the best of three final took place between Canada and Sweden with Canada winning a two game sweep now Canadian forward John Tonelli a very uh, a great grinder uh, really excelled at the event and he was named the tournament's MVP now for some reason this was the only Canada Cup to feature a squad from West Germany who managed a single point in five games based on a 4-4 tie with of all teams Czechoslovakia. Now Czechoslovakia was uh, made weak uh, that year uh, because it was the only point for the Czechs whose lineup had been weakened by several defections, one of whom Czechoslovakian star Peter Stashny, who was with the Nordiques at the time, uh, was eligible to play for Team Canada's uh, this event as a landed immigrant. The Canadian team, uh, despite having Green Gretzky and all the big Islander and older uh, stars was a disappointing 2-2-1 in the round robin. There was inner turmoil on the roster, which was dominated by players of the two NHL powerhouses, again the Oilers and the Islanders. Now, the, the squads had faced in the last two Stanley Cup finals, with the Islanders winning 83, Oilers winning 84, but was a lot of ble- bad blood and there were bitter feuds between players that had to be overcome. Now, in one semifinal, four players Canada faced first place Russia, who were a perfect 5-0 in a round robin. Canada dominated the first two periods, but managed only a 1-0 lead due to spectacular goaltending from Trechak backup Vladimir Mishkin. The Soviets scored twice in the third to take the lead, but defenseman Doug Wilson tied a game late in regulation, and in overtime, Mishkin continued his brilliant play. The Soviets eventually got a 2-on-1 against the flow of play, but were thwarted by a brilliant pole check by Paul Coffey, who was normally an offensive defenseman and was not known for his defensive prowess. Later in that play, Coffey's point shot was deflected in front of the net by Mike Bossy for the winning goal. In the other semis, Sweden scored on his first four shots on goal and cruised to a stunning 9-2 victory over the States. The Americans had defeated Sweden 7-1 in the round robin and looked very impressive prior to collapsing in this game. Now, Canada won game with the best of two, 5-2. to two. In game two, they built up a commanding 5 nothing lead in the first before Sweden mounted a comeback that fell just short. The final was 6-5. to five. Now, at the 81 and 76 events, there were six competing teams. The West German national team replaced Finland at the event thanks to a well-deserved fifth place finished at the 83 Ice Worlds. Now, the Soviet ended the round robin 5-0. and States were 3-1-1. One, one. Sweden was 3-2. Canada was 2-2-1, two, two, but had a plus 5. Czechoslovakia 0-4-1 oh, and, and West Germany 0-4-1. Oh, Again, the States met Sweden 7-1. Canada knocked off Germany 7-2, built on a 3-0 lead early on in front of only 10 thousand fans at a Montreal Forum. The Soviets bet the Czechoslovakia 3-0. Canada uh, tied the States 4-4. Soviets bet Sweden 3-2. Czechs and Germany tied 4-4 of course. Sweden uh, on two goals in the second period, 1-4-4-2 over uh, Canada. Soviets bet West Germany 8-1. States knocked off Czechoslovakia 3-2. Canada defeated Czechoslovakia on the backs of uh, four uh, goals in the first period, Soviets met the States 2 to 1. Sweden won 4-2 uh, with a comeback in the third period to break a 2-2 tie. Uh, the Soviets met Canada 6-3. They led 4-2 after 40 minutes. Germany lost 6-4 to the States, while Sweden bet Czechoslovakia 4-2. Now, uh, 
Many, many rinks uh, played host to the tournament, including uh, some in the states. Uh, contests were held at the Halifax Metro Center, Center, Center the Montreal Forum, the Olympic Saddle Dome in Calgary, London Gardens of all places, Czechoslovakia in West Germany, the Pacific Coliseum in Vancouver, Northlands Coliseum in Edmonton, the Buffalo Memorial Auditorium or the Odd. Uh, again, and uh, the big the big games, of course, in semifinals were held uh, at Northlands and uh, Saddledome, and again the Saddledome had the final. Now, stats leaders Gretzky had 12 points, including five goals. Goulet had 11 points, including five goals. Paul Coffey 11 points, including eight assists. Kent Nielsen, one of the best uh, players in the tournament, had 11 points in eight games. Hawk and Lube had 10 points. Michael Bossy had five goals in eight games. Tanelli had uh, nine points. Thomas Steen had another great tournament. Seven goals to lead all scorers. Ricky Middleton, uh, a favorite of the channel. Eight points in seven games, including four goals. And Vladimir Krutov had eight points in six games. Now, I think what really hurt Team Canada, in my personal opinion, there was no uh, specific number one for the event. We had Pete Peters, Grand Fuhr, and Reggie Lamelin. Pete Peters went three and one. Grand Fuhr went one and zero, oh, while Reggie Lamelin had a, a, a one and one record. Now, words at the event again. Tanelli was the MVP. The All Star team included uh, Michigan. Coffee, Rod Langley, very good tournament. Wayne Gretzky uh, and Tanelli and Makarov on the uh, forward lines. Now, what was kind of kind of weird uh, of this tournament was the different uh, adjustments of the rosters. Like I said, uh, Wayne uh, Wayne Gretzky was the unofficial leader of the team, but the honors were. Um, uh, still had, uh, you know, the key, uh, uh, the key players like uh, Gillies and uh, Gillies and uh, since then, and for Team Canada again. Head coaches or coaches were Glenn Sater, John Mockler, Ted Green, and Tommy Watt. Uh, Team Canada, very squad, strong squad. Glenn Anderson, Brian Bellows, Mike Bossy, Bobby Bourne, Raymond Bork, Paul Coffey, Mike Gartner, Michelle Goulet, Randy Gregg, uh, Wayne Gretzky, Charlie Huddy, Kevin Lowe, Mark Messier, Rick Middleton, Larry Robinson, Peter Stashney, Brent Sutter, John Tonelli, Doug Wilson, and Steve Eisman. But get this, ladies and gentlemen, the training camp lists could have made a team in itself. Mario Marwa, James Patrick, Denny Savard couldn't make the team. Al Secord, a 50-goal scorer, Scott Stevens, Brian Sutter, Sylvain Turgeon, and Ricky Vive. Uh, like I said, a loyal with talent. Now, Team Czechoslovakia, uh, uh, top players include Peter Klima, Vladimir Ruzicki, uh, uh, Lanislav Soville, Yuri Hirdina, uh, Dominic Hasek, of course, was uh, uh, a young goalie starter. Fredericic Boussil, and uh, of course, Yarmar Sindel. Now, for Team Sweden, uh, loaded. Hawken Lube, Kent Nielsen, Ben Dak, Gustafsson, Patrick Sundstrom, Peter Sundstrom, Thomas Steen, Anders Atkinson, Thomas Gredin, Pierre Eric Uckland, Matt Snasson, Thomas Sandstrom, Jan Clayson, uh, Matt Stilleen, Anders Alderbrink, uh, very underrated, Jan Lindholm, Mike uh, Telvin, Bo Eriksson, Peter Anderson, and Thomas Eriksson. And of course, uh, Peter Lindmark was uh, the top goalie for that side. But get this, ladies and gentlemen. This is where it got really interesting with Team USA because he suffered from a lot of injuries. The squad coached by Bob Johnson had Tom Barrasso, Glenn Chico Resch, who also played for Canada before, and Mark Barand and John Dean Basebrook in uh, the goalie nets, but it was training camp only. The squad included Bobby Brook, Aaron Broughton, Neil Broughton, Bobby Carpenter, Chris Chelios, Dave Christian, Brian Erickson, Mark Fusco, Tommy Hirsch, Phil Housley, David A. Jensen, Mark Johnson, Rod Langway, Brian Lawton, Brian Mullen, Joey Mullen, Ed Olchek, Mike Ramsey, Gordy Roberts, and Brian Trotche. Because Trotche, uh, Trotche was a, a dual citizen, of course, being Aboriginal. For training camp only, Scott Bukestad, Mike Eves, Tommy Fergus, Don Jackson, David E. Jensen, who was injured, and Pat LaFontaine, who was injured, did not play, Craig Ludwig, Mo Manta, and Chris Allen. I think the States should have played... Uh, Chrissy Nyland and Ludwig, but uh, they had a, compared to what the 76 uh, Canada Cup, they had uh, tons of talent. Now, uh, for the Russians, of course, the the, the usual suspects, Krutov, Larianov, uh, Makarov, Yashin, a very young uh, uh, Serdar Yashin, uh, 
Kozivinikov, Semenov, Kolvin, Yubakov, Gusarev, a uh, very well balanced team. And of course, Vladimir Mishkin taking Trechak's place as the number one goalie, with Tikhanov as head coach. Now, for the Germans, uh, for an up and coming team, you had some good prospects, including uh, Peter Schuller, Marcus Kuhl, uh, Dieter Hagen. Uh, so, we had a very balanced uh, team as well. Now, the idea about the 84 Canada Cup, we know that Team Canada lost in 81, and the Russians only excelled in the final. Uh, it was a reverse here. Canada maybe wasn't ready during the round robin, too much like who's going to hold the puck. But you look at Team USC here. That's probably one of the greatest Team USA teams that has ever been. And Brent Hall wasn't there yet, and LaFontaine, again, uh, didn't play. But put, put, it, put it this way, ladies and gentlemen. I Look at the players didn't make Team Canada from training camp. Again, Mary Mirawa, James Patrick, Denny Savard, Al Secord, Scott Stevens, Brian Sutter, Saval Turgeon, and Ricky Vive. That team could have won the Stanley Cup by itself. You put a bunch of ringers on it. You could have done well. So, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, that's the story of the 1984 Canada Cup. Some of the video is available on YouTube, but because Labatt's owns partial rights, it might be not exactly what you uh, you figured. And this was broadcast on CTV, mostly like the previous Canada Cups. And this was kind of sort of like the last gasp for Alan Eagleson's uh, strength in relation to Team Canada International. Because, but I don't know what happened with Trotty why he would jump to the states. Because we know West Mizzito played for the states in uh, '81, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, if someone wants to do back it up or correct me, uh, so uh, Trotty being a dual citizen, he could play for the team. But I think Trotty would have made Team Canada. But but it's kind of interesting with Tom Watt uh, coaching for Team Canada International. But the rest of the the, the head coaching staff was all Oilers, where the Oilers like uh, were not asked to come in. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, my take on the 1984 Canada Cup. If you like what we're doing here, give us a like, comment, and subscribe. And like I mentioned the other day, we've started monetization, and the proceeds we're hoping to be sending to uh, minor hockey programs across Canada. Uh, not making big money on it, but any money we, we, we make, we know it's going to go towards a good cause. Thanks for listening. Bye.